uh, this great call to the next level of ministry in life. And so as we enjoy the fellowship, uh, let's just take a few minutes and uh, bless the food and thank the Lord for the time together. So Lord God, we have gathered, and wow, what a great day it is. Uh, we didn't expect it to come this quickly and things just kind of sneak up on us. But your grace is always there for every step of the way. And so uh, as we enjoy the fellowship and we enjoy the food, we ask your sincere blessing upon Don, upon Luke, upon the move, on all the logistics and things coming. But more than that, Lord, just allow your light to shine on him and help us to celebrate with him uh, in, a, in a rearward look at all he has accomplished these many, many years. The lives he has touched, the people he has mentored, the difference he has made for the kingdom of God in proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. We are thankful for him. And, Lord, uh, frankly, for the continuation of his ministry through the lives he's touched. Uh, bless the food. Bless it to our body. Bless those who have served us today. And allow us to continue to bask in your glory that you have given us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, Mr. Erickson, uh, been up here at MCOM headquarters for about two years. Uh, you and I were neighbors at one point in time. And uh, I really appreciate your professionalism. Uh, I can honestly say one of the best DREs that I've worked with in my entire career. Um, up three. So yeah, I was going to say, he only worked with one. <laughs> so. Definitely in the top three. <laughs> yeah. But more importantly, uh, a good friend, um, a good ear uh, when I have to run something by you. Um, and just appreciate all the knowledge that you share with me at the range uh, and your willingness to, to you know, help Jaden out as well. So I uh, got something for you. So, um, you put this on your call, uh, wherever you want to, uh, and just let people know there's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Child Services Suitability Cell. I met Don, oh gosh, it's got to be, we, well, we started working together after the Fort Meyer incident with Child Services Background Check. And we were in Hawaii, Kaplan Peck, right? Was, was it me? Yeah. Yep. Um, so we go way back on that. So for those of you who don't know that backstory, um, we had an incident in um, one of our child care centers that resulted in the whole Army and DOD um, really revamping and, and uh, really uh, relooking their, their suitability process. And Don was a big part of um, that from the very beginning. So I couldn't be more excited when he came to headquarters because I'm like, he knows, he understands. So anyway, um, one of the things that we w became kind of our theme that year, so this all hit with President Obama contacting Secretary Panetta um, and the Secretary of the Army right right before Christmas week. So we always talk about December 2012 as that year that the Grinch stole Christmas. Uh, we had the op center <laughs> going 24 seven and everybody in the army was doing audits. So we had like multiple audit teams that came out. So I wanted to talk to you about some of the, some of the gifts that we had. So, because they all have kind of a little bit of significance. So you couldn't go without the Grinch, right? <laughs> so Christmas. Um, Uh, another um, another thing that I just wanted to talk about, just and is kind of a tradition in child youth services, is there is a story about the little girl and the starfish. Have you ever heard of that story? Yes. Okay. And so um, we have three books: um, Starfish on the Beach and uh, and The Kissing Hand. And this is actually looks like a recycled book because it is. It's out of print. But um, it's about a, a little Maltese dog. And I think you know I have two Maltese dogs. But anyway, um, for your grandkids. So reading, quality books, OK? Um, I found this. I was cleaning out my garage. And you've probably seen my garage project. Remember yes. when we did the PRB training in yes. April a couple of years ago? So growing hope. And then I know uh, you were a veteran, and so this is a little memento from San Antonio. And of course, you can't forget year two, 2020, 
<laughs> right? I wish. I know. And now here, here's, a, well, and I know you were going to be on the road, so that's the ha happy camper, so you're kind of traveling around hard, and um, candy for the trip. Now here, the, so there's one thing, Don, that didn't come in, actually, okay? And so it's a little Christmas ornament. So for those of you um, who know me and Don, we have, um, and those who, uh, uh, those who are Facebook friends so with those us. those who follow us on, on Facebook. On Facebook, I was going to say, we see things probably a little different politically, <laughs> right? But just a little bit. We've had lots and lots of good, yeah, yeah, yeah. good, good, yeah, good, just good, a little. good debate. Some of the most constructive conversation I've read through. <laughs> Yeah. So, but but at the end of but at the end of the day, we we um we do see eye to eye on child protection and um and I think we all want for people to come together yes. and um so I was thinking back of my Sunday school CCD days and there's a song um, um let there be peace on earth have you heard that song okay so that kind of kind of came to me so it, i i ordered you a, a little ornament that has that theme on it now here's the funny thing so i was looking at your retirement ceremony and i'm like you know i was going to give you kind of a, like a peace sign or something and i'm like but he's actually making a peace sign but of course right underneath that is his, his gun you know whatever target yeah, so anyway the, the job guy. yeah exactly exactly so, so yeah so peace out um we wish you the best and you have been such a good advocate for us and I, honestly i I work with a lot of people. Um, everything about working in a headquarters is working with people and building relationships. And um, gosh, we are going to really miss you, Don. Likewise. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is everybody's opportunity. You're in the program to go ahead and say something. Oh, no, not you. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to cooperate. I'm retired. So. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jay Tobin. Um, I'm a retired chaplain, but before I was a chaplain, uh, my family, we were at Fort Riley when I was an infantry officer with Don. Um, so my introduction with Don uh, was we were volunteers with the youth group. Uh, when he was a uh, running club beyond there. I have a lot of fun stories about the creative things he's done. If you're not familiar with Spiritual Rangers, like he's done a really great, there's, there's a legacy of mature Christians out there that, that Don has shepherded through a lot of, a lot of challenges being military kids. Uh, and um, our family would be one of them. So as we've encountered challenges, and as Don has encountered challenges, uh, we've been there for each other in ways that are really significant. Uh, a couple that I think of right off the top of my head. Don was one of the first uh, to hold my daughter when we brought her home from the hospital mm -hmm. uh, when we adopted her uh, to Manhattan, Kansas. Um, and then when we did our second adoption, uh, I was in seminary, decided to become a chaplain, unemployed, uh, and my daughter, um, soon to be daughter, was at uh, Children's Mercy in Kansas City. And it got really complicated. I won't go into it, but it got really complicated, and we didn't know if it was going to happen. And uh, Robin and I were devastated, and we had our baby, at that. and we didn't know where to go. And I called Don, and Don said, "Come to my house until they figure it out." So we stayed with Don for almost ten days, um, as the legal system was trying to figure out whether or not we we're going to be allowed to adopt her. And so um, my 16-year-old is Native American, and so. The tribe wasn't sure whether they were going to give us permission to adopt her. And so it was stuck in the legal courts. And so we couldn't see her. And we were just at Don's house, playing with his dogs, uh, doing things that we do. And um, so that's another time. The conversations that we've had over the years as we've gone through different transitions have been encouraging. I have a Bible at home uh, that, you know, Don wrote an inscription in there that says, a brother is born for adversity. And uh, he is definitely my brother. Uh, we've been through a lot together. We share a lot of the same things. So this afternoon we're going to go pop some caps and have a heck of a good time. Uh, no offense. <laughs> really, we, we, we do it to promote peace. Uh, one bullet at a time. And really, just cap guns. No, no rounds. Brand new, right over there. Yeah. <laughs> 
and, and, and some of you were here when my family uh, was gone and I worked here. And I got notice that I had to get out of my house in less than a week. And so uh, the whole office, it was miraculous. Yeah, the people that are nodding. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole office showed up. And uh, I found a house that was just two doors down, and we got everything moved except the garage. And so this morning, I was actually talking with Don about it. I said, I have, this, I have this remembrance of you cleaning this nasty refrigerator in the house that we were moving on. He's like, I don't remember that at all. So there it was, August 30th, 2014. Don's got his shirt off when he's just in there. <laughs> Getting the refrigerator. I'm like, proof. He's like, man. So... Uh, I think many of you have seen how when it hits the fan, Don shows up and rolls up his sleeves, and he'll walk through hell and back with you. And uh, he's done that for the Chaplain Corps. He's done that for countless families, and uh, the Tobin family is blessed to be one of those families. So, love you, brother. Love you back. And, uh, and my gift is we're going to go wreck diving in June. So, so Don's a scuba diver. Uh, I'm... I am with a scuba diving organization in my spare time. So we're going to go up to Lake Superior and go explore some old ships. Okay. Um, my wife Becky and I, we've known Don, my name's Bill, we've known Don since uh, 2007. Um, when I joined the military, um, I, I, I didn't really develop a relationship with you during that time because I went on a just a really quick, fun 15-month deployment. And when I got back, then we PCS to Germany. And then I had this brilliant idea of, of going through CPE. And I went to CPE in San Antonio. And once I finished uh, CPE, we went back to Fort Riley again. And we bumped into this bald-headed man uh, <laughs> at, I think, Capon Chapel, and we just hit it off again. And um, I remember I asked him, hey, Don, do you remember me? And he says, yes, sir. <laughs> so his recollection is either good or he was just saying that. <laughs> um, possibly a combination of both. But ultimately, I have two boys, a 23-year-old uh, Sasquatch. He's this huge mega kid. And then Caleb is not as tall, but he, he, two strapping boys. And uh, hearing you talk about spiritual rangers, uh, we got more involved with Don in the spiritual rangers program. And uh, my kids, Brad and Caleb, Emma loves you, but she was not a part of the spiritual rangers. But they, they, Brad and Caleb both, without a shadow of a doubt, absolutely adore you. And that speaks volumes about you. Because um, he knows how to connect with kids.
Gotta zoom out right. more. He's taller than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the live stream's gonna be from his Adam's apple down. <laughs> the lights is kind of shining off his head. Though. So, hey. Hey. So, one of the things in Don's life that uh, evidently he's done for his family is write letters. And he gave me the opportunity to contact his daughter. And so, uh, in discussing about his life, uh, things I did not know, um, he has always taken the time in significant events, whatever happened in his family's life, to write them a letter. So, on this occasion, uh, we have frame for you and we will take them out of the frame put a letter from each one of your children and letters that were all sent over the internet uh, and these are for you to read at some later time but every one of your kids wrote your letter congratulating you on your retirement and we'll even be kind enough to take them out of there so you can read them thank you <laughs> So also, also in talking with your daughter, we had some uh, something prepared by some very talented hands, and it appears that your grandchildren wanted to uh, oh. actually oh. thank you and oh. see what you oh. 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 And this is also addressed to you, Luke, so we'll get to... It's got a turkey on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Wempa. There you go. <laughs> and so, uh, when we uh, conduct a retirement for somebody, I come in and I have an interview with them. And I try to find out the things that motivated them, the people they admired. And we cast a wide net. And sometimes the net brings in something, and sometimes it doesn't. But most of the time, we're going to bring in what we try to get. And in this case, we have miniatures framed in here, except for one card, and I'll explain it when I get to it. We have miniatures uh, framed in here, which I'll give you the originals. We have a United States Senate commendation from Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. We have congratulations from the mayor of San Antonio. We have a letter of congratulations from Jimmy Carter. We have a letter of congratulations from the University of Missouri Dean. When did, when did you go to college there? That would have been... Uh, was the dean born then? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I really have to pause to remember it was 81 through 85. Okay. There's a letter in here from the uh, college. Also, as a part of recognizing Denise for all the decorations and our staff for setting this up today, but she was the driver behind all these decorations and how beautiful it is here today, I also asked her to take on this issue, and this is where I ask him, who is the person that you feel like as an author motivated you the most? And he, and he said Max Licato. Well, Max Licato happens to be local. Uh, Christian writer, very prolific Christian writer. We've tried to reach out to him before unsuccessfully, but Denise was actually able to reach out to him and got a letter of congratulations. Oh, and it was training from, order. Yes. So whoever might, we'll, we'll also do that for the video. All right. Yes. And so now we have uh, the privilege, and, and no, I don't, I don't dare go uh, without a script, but we have several things. Uh, like, again, really glad you didn't pack up already. So, Mr. Springer, without any further ado, we have a certificate of retirement uh, from the United States Army, and I will not uh, read this, but after so many faithful years, uh, it is not without recognition and great appreciation, and uh, it's going to be nearly impossible to fill your shoes and the capability you have brought to this team with both professionalism and vision so uh from yes I'm, i gotta read it you know because this is like the retirement deal all right on the occasion of your retirement i wish to extend to you my personal thanks and appreciation of the united states army for the many years of service which you have given to our country i share your pride and contribution you have made to the army and i trust that you will maintain an active interest in the army and its objectives during your retirement 
You take with you my best wishes and those of your fellow employees for happiness and success in all the years that lie ahead. General Gabram. So, nice. well done. Right. I'm sorry, the hat is just it's just gotta go. That that's, that's all right. That's all right. Come back. <laughs> and of course, uh, civilian awards are recognition of service, um, and they're honestly pretty hard to get in this command. They should have given you the equivalent of a Legion of Merit, but unfortunately, the political tenor of what it is, uh, we have the uh, civilian service award. So, Mr. Uh, Swingler, if you'd care to post the order, okay. please Just remain seated. seated. This is to certify that the Secretary of the Army has awarded the Meritorious Civilian Service Medal to Donald B. Erickson for exceptional service and performance of duty during the period of August 2014 through December 2021, culminating as the Senior Religious Education Program Director, Headquarters Installation Management Command, Joint Base San Antonio. During this period, Mr. Erickson provided oversight to religious education in every chapel around the globe positively impacting the lives of soldiers, families, and civilians. His leadership ensured the development, implementation, management, and evaluation of comprehensive religious support and education, spiritual formation, volunteer management, and youth ministry programs. Mr. Erickson's dedication and commitment to duty reflect great credit upon him, the U.S. Army Material Command, and the United States Army sign Douglas M. Gaber, Lieutenant General, U.S. Army Commanding. All right, let me go through the call of the service. Thank you. We'll get that in the light. All right. All right, and so from the staff, uh, Mr. So by the way, everyone, you know this is all Mr. Swindler, right? Mm. So everyone just, just stare at him. He hates it. He hates it, but this is all Mr. Swingler who puts these things together. So, Don, what we have is uh, we've taken, so you can see my sloppy handwriting in the top. I'll interpret that later. It takes the gift of interpretation. So just some photos of the team and the folks that we've been here with um, along the way. Looking for Jay Tobin. I'm, I'm seeing him here somewhere. He shouldn't be. He shouldn't be? No. You don't like him? I love, I love Jay. Oh, he Unfortunately, don't. Jay and I have never... We've, Never been able We've to photoshopped folks in before. Yeah, we've we 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 photoshopped yeah. every one of you in these. Into that oh, picture. you're yeah. photoshopped into that yes. photo. Yes. That's pretty good. It is very yeah. good. Yeah. I'm getting concerned. <laughs> yes. You know, you honest <laughs> officer, I wasn't there. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, uh, just a little bit of uh, something to hang on the wall. This one will actually be something that is displayed yes. and, and not shot at from 150 yards with a tight grouping. And so, again, just uh, a history of the time you spent with us and uh, the love and joy that you've given to our lives. So, so again, little smile, and on to huh, the next. Thank you, Mr. Swinkler. <laughs> okay, so uh, the Chief of Chaplains has several awards that represent great service to the entire Corps. Uh, one of them, uh, which will be presented to Mr. Erickson briefly, is the Order of Joseph, uh, recognition of his continued uh, DA civilian level support uh, throughout his career and contributions to the United States Army and all that we do. And so, uh, without any further ado, and they gotta have a short guy do this stuff, right? So, I know, don't worry about it. He has a certificate. Great, so, sir? Might all who hear or read this proclamation know that Mr. Donald E. Erickson, character, expertise, and devotion to duties are in keeping with the highest U.S. Army Corps values and traditions and exemplifies his dedication and devotion to God, the U.S. Army Chaplain Corps, and the United States Army. He directly contributed to the success of the overall comprehensive religious support mission. His care and training for 54 Army directors of religious education enabled them to provide superior programs across the globe that made a significant difference in the lives of our soldiers, families, and DA civilians. His actions exemplified the highest standards of the U.S. Army Chaplain Corps and the sacred values we all seek to emulate his efforts reflect great credit on himself, the Army Chaplain Corps, and the United States Army, given under my hand this 14th day of January, 2022, for looking Thomas L. <laughs> <laughs> that's, when he, that's when he was originally going to have this retirement ceremony, and then he changed it. So, yeah. <laughs> so Don, I'm going to try to do the best I can and, and wrap it up. And uh, yes, sir, uh, Don, th this is real. 
you're actually hearing these words. Um, all the memories, all the things you've done, all the lives you've touched. Yeah, we're here. And we're so thankful for you. So uh, from the Chief of Chaplains, uh, the Order of St. Joseph. Thank you. Do I get right. Ginsu knives? Is that you, you, you for know? three easy installments in 1995. <laughs> All right, so this, uh, there, there's always a flag, but this one has special meaning. And Mr. Swingler? Uh, this is the flag of the United States of America. This is to certify that the accompanying flag was flown over the United States Capitol on Veterans Day 2021. Oh, cool. At the request of Honorable Ted Cruz, United States Senator, this flag was flown for Mr. Donald E. Erickson II in honor of your Department of the Army Civilian Service. Well, thank you. That's very cool. That's cool. Yeah. All right, sir. sir if you have any comments. I, I, of course, have comments. Don, uh, these fine folks have known you farther and longer and better than I do. Um, that's part of being a quiet professional is, is getting things done and continuing to maintain that course despite many leadership uh, challenges and, and things across the field child background check and we probably need to lay hands on you and just bless you <laughs> for what you do every day um, but, but handling at your level and empowering the field uh, despite the resistance and the continued struggles and fights uh, your faithfulness your quiet professionalism uh, the dedication to everything you do with excellence. It's not going to be forgotten. And, and we know that we're, we're sending you packing, not just with all these things, but with our sincere blessing. And, and you know, well, of course you've got everyone's personal phone number. You did all the concealed carry for everybody in the room. But, <laughs> so we're well equipped when you come back. Um, but, but you know, and I know, and everyone here knows, uh, that you carry our hearts with you. Uh, this is your family. This is your home. This is your team. And Luke, uh, we love your dad. Uh, we do, sincerely. And it's not just because we're afraid of him. You know, it's like in the photo I've got, it's like, what's that bulge in this? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Off campus. We're good. Um, but we want to just make sure you know that you carry with us and you carry forward the blessing. Anytime you need it, write the check. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a good account if you can't cash in on it. I know for Mike and for Denise and the rest of the team, Mr. Coe, myself, Everybody here, Jay Tobin, he's just going to be around me. He's coming to your place. But uh, write the check. You need us, let us know. Because yeah, transitions, transitions are something else. And when you get set up in Florida, we're all coming by. Okay? So, uh, so the floor is yours in five minutes. I say the floor in is yours. In five minutes. In five minutes. Okay, so I'm sitting seat. aside. He's going to have a seat too. So what in we're going to do is in, in uh, working with his daughter, uh, we had a few people that did not have a chance to attend retirement. So the first is a friend of his, and then the next, I think, might be his grandkids. Hi, Don. Vesna and I want to congratulate you on your retirement. Um, you've been in a lot of work, and I know you're looking forward to it. And I don't know specifically or firsthand about uh, results, but I'm convinced that uh, that. You've done a lot of good for a lot of people, and that's something you can look back on and be proud of. Um, and I wish you the best for your retirement years uh, and a, a lot of good years ahead of you, I hope. Um, Vesna and I are also looking forward to that time, and uh, you're always welcome to come see us in Croatia uh, after, we, uh, after we do retire. Best of luck in everything. What is your favorite part about Grandpa? Grandpa Don. Um, tickling me. What's <laughs> your favorite part? Yeah. Yeah, what else? And attacking me. Attacking you? Yeah. Anything else? Yes. And what it for me. <laughs> Money for me. When he does what? Money for me. All right. Ah! All right, Peter. Uh, what, what is your favorite thing about Grandpa Don? When he came to our house and he played baseball with us. You like to play sports? Yes. 
Nice. What else? Um. You like to play with Nelly and have fun? Just my children and my wife Thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the U.S. Supposed to be a walk in the park If it was, we'd all have it It's more like a blindfold Reach in the dark And you're lucky if you can grab it Now your hands in mine I'm gonna keep you close No matter what curves The road's gonna throw We won't let go Cause we both know We're gonna be the strong ones Still standing when the hell comes Still running when the world runs dry Still believing when the sun don't shine Ain't afraid of a hard day's night Won't quit when it don't go right Let the world bring it down some Girl, we're gonna be the tough ones Yeah, the tough ones Here's what I tell everyone I was born by God's dear grace In an extraordinary place With the stars and stripes And the eagle flies It's a big old land with countless dreams Happiness ain't out of reach Hard work pays off the way it should Yeah, I've seen enough to know that we've got it good Where the stars and the stripes And the eagle fly The colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky Are also on the faces Of people going by I see friends shaking hands Saying how do you do They're really saying I love you I hear babies cry I watch them grow much more than I never knew, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world, yes, I think to myself, 
what a wonderful say thank you uh, to all of you who are here. You are <laughs> I am grateful for each and every one of you. This team is a wonderful team. You are, you are competent, uh, but more importantly than that, you are all good friends. And I have just been blessed uh, to have had the opportunity to know you. I wanted to, uh, to give a, a few thanks. First off, again, to thank Mike. Uh, for what he's done to put uh, this piece on. But I also want to thank, and I want you to thank Denise, because Denise has really put this together, and if it was up to the terms of the place and the setting and how nice it is, because if it was up to me, we would have done the drive through at Arby's. Mm -hmm. We just kind of <laughs> gone on through this. So Denise, thank you so much. Uh, I love the video because uh, the other thing I'm just so... So blessed uh, to have such a great family. Uh, Luke uh, has been with me everywhere we've gone uh, <laughs> since forever. He's, he's obviously born in the home, and we went to Riley and uh, on to Hawaii together. We had lots of great adventures, and he and Daniel came here for uh, to San Antonio with me. And Luke has uh, just been a, an amazing friend and roommate, in addition to being a son. So, my kids are wonderful. My grandkids are wonderful. That is really who I identify with. I love being a dad. I love being a granddad. So I'm very grateful for my children. Uh, I also want to thank my brother Jay. Now Jay, Jay, is, uh, Jay has been instrumental in where I'm at today. In that, when we were at Riley, uh, I was, as you mentioned, I did youth ministry as a, as a contractor. And uh, I was there for a couple of years and had DREs. I answered to the DRE, that DRE kept turning over, kept turning over, kept turning over. Uh, and I was asked to consider being a DRE. I'm like, I don't know that I really want to do that. I love what I'm doing working with kids, working with teens, getting to meet folks like the Breckenridges and the Johnsons and some of the other families that we saw, getting to know those families and those kids. That really says, you need to think about the ministry, not just tactically, but strategically. And the impact you could have on this installation to broaden uh, the, the people that we touch. And so really, Jay, it's partly your fault that I started <laughs> down this path. <laughs> uh, I also would be amiss if I did not pause to mention uh, Chaplain Dan uh, Paul, who was my garrison chaplain at the time. Uh, I applied to be a GS9 DRE and was told, you're not qualified. You're not going to get in. And we went back and said, uh, like Dan Chaplain Paul said, I'd, I'd like you to reconsider. And I said, nope, not going to do that. And he and my previous, my first garrison chaplain was a chaplain, uh, Greg Shannon. And Greg and Dan both kind of teamed up on uh, the first senior DRE we had, which was Jack Anderson. He said, you really need to reconsider this. So they, they gave me a, a tentative agreement to come on as a GS9. I was told you're not going to go anywhere, but good luck. You're, you're, welcome to, <laughs> you're welcome to start ministry here at Fort Riley. It's just been phenomenal, the years uh, that I've been able to serve. I have phenomenal colleagues out in the field, DREs, uh, many of them who set the inspiration for me when I first came on. I, was, I used to be younger, and they were older. And I looked up to these folks who just had so much creativity and so much energy. Uh, in fact, I just met with uh, Kim Casey, for some of us who you know Kim. She was one of our senior DREs, 30-something years of uh, serving as a DRE, and I had lunch with her, and I told her, I looked up to you guys because you really set the standard uh, for being a, a, a religious educator. Uh, thankful, as I mentioned, to the military families. These families, I've got to know and watch your kids and hundreds of other people's mm -hmm. children grow up from these snot-nosed, bratty little sixth graders. <laughs> Not yours. <laughs> <laughs> now, adults serving in uniform, married, raising kids of their own. Such an honor and privilege to serve the community that we have an opportunity to serve. It's just, I, I, it's, I can't express my gratitude enough for that. 
Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the team here, I could go by and mention each and every one of you and, and the things that I appreciate about you, but if I did that, I'd have to think of something to say about Mike. So that's mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna have to pause on that for a second, but let me, I will focus on Mike in a minute. But uh, let me once again say, uh, this is a great team. And again, you're very competent at what you do, but much more importantly is you are fun to come to work with. And Chris and your team. So <laughs> Denise, Denise knows everybody in the building. I have to mention this. So Denise knows like everybody in the building. I don't know really anybody outside of, I was telling Denise as we were coming into the building, I really don't know anybody in the building. She said, oh, you must know somebody. And I, we ran into Willie. He said, Mr. Don, Mr. Don. And I'm like, well, I know a few people in g that's, that's the only people I know. So Chris, Willie, Jessica, Jessica and Janie, uh, love working with you guys. I will miss coming downstairs when I have a question to ask just because, I mean, every a few times recently that I've come down, Willie and I end up talking for like an hour. So. <laughs> that explains a lot. Oh, wait, that explains a lot. It was, it was after it. hours. It was after hours. It was about the background check. Yeah. It did start out about background checks. It really did. Uh, but then we talk about other things. So uh, what a what a joy to work. Uh, fabulous uh, team. Great NCOs. You guys are sharp. Uh, just just sharp. I just again professionally outstanding. But again, just a joy. And then the last thing I'll maybe say about that before I start picking on Mike and Chaplain Zell. Uh, I did as we were as we were talking and looking around. Most everybody's been through a firearms class except for this group. Although Willie can, oh, no, 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 no. Really can handle the fire. So, uh, if, if we've got 14 days left, if you want to go to the range, be happy to do that. Uh, let's talk a little bit. So we, uh, I mentioned our, our our little MCOM RSO team here that we have. But this family, and it really is, some people throw that kind of term around, but I've got brothers and sisters who I truly love and really appreciate and really like and get along with. Them. But then I want to talk briefly about what I'm going to say is dad and mom <laughs> in this family. So, yeah, so there's, a reason why, there's a reason why Mike gets mom. Uh, but before I talk about mom, I want to talk about uh, our current dad. Uh, so, Chaplain Zell has been such a delight to work for. Uh, the best chaplain boss I've had. You care about the people. You care about the team. And like a dad, and I've watched you mentor your boys. You mentor the team. Well, I've seen you do some things that are uh, <laughs> a little bit questionable as a father, but hey, it works for you. That's okay. Uh, no, Chaplain Zell, uh, the way he cares for this team. Uh, mentors us, encourages us, pushes us, challenges us, uh, but always is caring for us. I really appreciate, you know, you recognize families, and it's, it's a value you hold personally. Family is what's most important. We have a job to do, we'll do the job. And sometimes we need, to, we need to dig in a little deeper, but we don't need to stress over it. And when it comes time, the, the day's over with, it's time to go home because family is really the most important. So I appreciate that about you as a father, because as I mentioned, that's kind of my identity as well, what I value. Uh, but I appreciate how that bleeds into the way you lead this team. Thank you. Now, mom. <laughs> so uh, again, part of the reason, oh, you know, I didn't share this. Maybe I'll, well, I want to talk about mom, and maybe I'll share a little bit about how I got here. But I will say, one of the reasons that I came here uh, was because Jay Tobin spoke so highly of you as a leader. And that meant a lot to me, not knowing you, because I value this man's opinion so much. Uh, and so what I've watched you, Mike, again, you care about people. And you have done a masterful job in handling sometimes the different dads we've had in the family. Uh, you've done such a masterful job of protecting the team when dad's blowing up or going off course. Uh, you've helped us, uh, you've helped the children kind of come together and realize what's important. Uh, and you've always, always cared for us. And I so, there's not a, I have not had a better leader, military or civilian. And, and you have just made this job such a delight to work with you and for you. You also do a great job of correcting me without making me feel like a complete idiot. 
but you just have a very tactful way of, of leading and, and, and mentoring this team. Thank you. You are, you have a, sorry, you can clap just a second. This is, there are relationships, friendships that have developed in addition to work uh, that I just truly value. So thank you very much. I could probably go on and I did want to tell the story about briefly me coming here because this is also a God thing. Uh, I never had aspirations. I love doing tactical ministry still. Uh, I love being, uh, at the time I was in Hawaii, we absolutely loved Hawaii. Hawaii was great. And uh, Jay called me one day and said uh, this position uh, was open and he, he asked if I was interested. And I said, nah, I'm not. In fact, he, I think you knew I wasn't interested. He said, I don't think Don's interested. He loved what he's doing out there. We were diving and kayaking and having all sorts of things. But he'd asked. And I said, yeah, thank you. Not interested. Comes back a week or so later and said, have you given it any thought? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I'm not interested. It's like, well, they want you to think about it. I thought about it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> he calls back later and says, Chaplain uh, Giamona and uh, Mike want a, an interview with you, a phone call. And I'm like, I'm really flattered, but I'm really not interested. Only so, well, just, the blue pill. <laughs> yeah, no, just, just take the call. So I took the call. And I told them all the reasons why I was not the right person to be here and why they should consider several other people. And Chaplain Giamona said something that really irritated me. He said, have you prayed about it? <laughs> well, no, I didn't pray about it. I don't want to go. He says, I want you to pray about it. So I spent the weekend praying about it and really felt uh, in the end that I was given unmerited favor uh, to come here. Didn't know why, didn't want to come. Uh, but now that I came, I do understand why, uh, and I feel, uh, and, and I know that God has a plan, not only for my life, but he's got a plan for each and every one of your lives, whether you know it or not. And so my encouragement for each of us is to be pursuing God's plan. Try to determine what it is, one, try to figure out what it is he wants you to do. Sometimes it's hard, but know that God will still take care of you wherever you go and whatever you do. And so when I leave here, I leave with the confidence of knowing I don't know where I'm going, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I am confident that God will take care of me. Thank you all. God bless you all. Thank you. Over to you, Mom. That's it. <laughs> Mike will forever be yeah. called. Mike. Yeah, I know. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. I'm going to really, really appreciate that. My part so funny Just remember that I get to edit the video that gets posted on YouTube. Okay, so it's kind of like the pastor says. You know, he gets the last word. Best mom ever. Sweatshirt. <laughs>